Welcome, welcome everyone. To everyone in the room and everyone online, I'm happy to see everybody on this Sunday. Um, my call to worship made a lot more sense this morning when it was still raining, but <laughs> when I woke up, it was pouring rain, and I thought to myself, it was early in the morning, and I was saying, there is no way I'm making it today. There's no way. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the rain, that's no secret, but um, I was reminded again, like in all things, uh, the Lord created it, so therefore it is beautiful. Um, Isaiah 45 verse 8 says, You heavens above, rain down my righteousness. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide. Let salvation spring up. Let righteousness flourish with it. I, the Lord, have created it. Please stand with us if you're able as we begin to worship.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for washing our worries away, for giving us the space to think and only think about you, what you've done for us, what you're calling us to do, things that may scare us, but you're calling us nonetheless because that is what you want and it is what you've written for each and one of us. And we pray that we continue on that path that you've laid out for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You were my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You were my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. 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 Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, worship team. It reminds me of Psalm 95, 1 and 2. Come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and exalt him with music and song. Good morning. My name is Marion Winhu, and I'm glad to be your service host today. If you are new with us and you'd like to learn more about this church or share a bit about yourself with us, we invite you to fill out one of our Get Connected cards. You will see one of the Gateway team hand, uh, showing them um, at the back there. And so one of the members who greeted you on your way will be glad to provide you with uh, these small cards for you to complete. We have this amazing opportunity this morning to gather together and worship and give our hearts to God uh, in this hour together. The service today will be focused on mission. And in a few minutes, we're going to have a chance to introduce the SENT team that will be going to El Salvador on our behalf. We will learn a little bit more about El Salvador and about how we can partner and minister and friendship with the church there. We'll also have a chance to hear from Jennifer Lau, who is part of our uh, church and is the executive director of the Canadian Baptist Ministries and from Pastor Sheldon, who will speak on the powerful biblical word, sent. Please note that we have a prayer corner, and it's at the back of our church, and at the end of the service, members of our prayer team will be glad to meet with you in prayer. 
So if you have a desire for prayer today, please make your way to the prayer corner after the service. We are excited about all that is happening in our church in the days to come. And there's several announcements that have great opportunities of connecting here at MCBC. So this is a season of new beginnings. Are you looking for your next step in making a connection here at MCBC? Come and join our new, a new small group. A small group is a place where you can connect, grow, and serve. You are invited to join us this spring for a one-month deeper dive into the Gospel of Mark. Each week we'll study, pray, and reflect on a portion of Mark's Gospel in line with our sermon series. When will this be? Well, there's two options. There's an in-person on Tuesday night, 7 p.m., starting this week on April 16th. Or you can also join us online on Monday nights at 7 p.m., and that's going to be starting next week, April 22nd. So if you'd like to take part, please register online, and you can email Pastor Sheldon and the, um, at his email. On Sunday, April 28th, we are planning to highlight valuable role of children's ministry here at MCBC. Perhaps you already know that we have several programs. So our nursery ro room is active during our 11 o'clock service. Promised Land is our Sunday school program, and Acorns is our weekday Wednesday program. And they also and we have support uh, our children through JK to grade five students. We also look forward to VBS, which is the Vacation Bible School. It's going to be held through the MCBC, and it's scheduled for August 19th to the 23rd. We are grateful for the support of dedicated and gifted volunteers in these ministries, and we are actively seeking more adult youth volunteers to successfully operate our programs. If you're interested in supporting children's ministry here at MCBC, and learning more about what we do and how we can effectively make change, please join us Sunday, April 28th, after the 11 o'clock service for a lunch and orientation led by the key ministry leaders. If you have any questions regarding this gathering, please contact Dante Jemet, and you'll see his email up on the uh, screen. I'm glad to give you the announcements and to be part of our SENT team. We invite you to mark this date. Saturday, June 8th, from 5 to 8, we're going to have a special El Salvador night here at MCBC. And Trevor will be coming up later and he's going to introduce the team and tell you a little bit more about this. In the meantime, I ask you to save the date and join us here for this celebration. Another celebration is Celebrate and Serve, and it's coming up on May the 4th, from 8.30 to 12 noon. Please save this date for serving and our spring cleaning here at MCBC. And there will be work to do both indoors and outdoors. So we value your presence with us. And there's one more event happening at MCBC on Saturday, May 4th. And I'm going to invite Caroline Gemma to come forward and let us know more about what is happening on May the 4th. Oh, thank you. Got a little clap. <laughs> Good morning, church family, those here and online. Just a quick follow-up from my, um, my announcement last, last Sunday. We are doing the Fill the Truck of Fundraiser event, the Drop and Toss, on May the 4th. We have approval to work with Value Village, um, who will be buying our, our donations. So when I began working with uh, Value Village, I had told them, we had agreed that the church is going to raise $500. In order to do that, we were going to ask 100 people um, in our church to donate um, either a garbage bag full of gently used um, clothing or boxes of gently use household items, books, or media. They calculated that if we're gonna use 100 people, if 100 people are gonna serve in this, in this uh, event, that we would need to collect 125 bags and 38 boxes. But as I have asked last week, I wanna do more. 
I want us to do more. I want more than 125 boxes. I want more than 100, I mean, 38, um, 125 bags, 38 boxes, and more than 100 of us to, to serve in this event. So I just want to let the church know that as of last Sunday, we had 22 people along with um, congregates friends sign up. We have registered 45 uh, garbage bags and 14 boxes thus far. And we have about 16 people already today that have signed up to contribute. I will continue to meet with Value Village on a weekly basis to give them an update on how many people have committed to donating and again, um, how much. Please know that on May the 4th, when you, you have to have registered or let, signed up to let us know, I cannot go and deliver anything more than Valley Village already um, has put on their accountability uh, tracker. So um, please continue, ask family, friends, neighbors, and sign up with us between now and April the 28th. So again, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do more than 500. All of us are gonna come together. And in Jesus' name, we're gonna continue to raise money towards mission initiatives within the church. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Caroline. Traditionally, this is the point in our service where we present our tithes and our offerings to God. And it reminds me of Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with his first fruits of all crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over the new wine. And I was raised on a farm, and so this verse reminds me of that harvesting and that planting time of year as spring um, is on us, uh, upon us now. It's also a reminder that good, ble good, bless good blessings and tangible offerings um, are, sorry, this is a reminder that God blesses tangible offerings with tangible blessings. Giving is done in gratitude and in joy, and as we acknowledge that God is our ultimate source of provision, if you are new to giving or you've been giving for a long time, be assured that God's faithfulness to us when we serve him in this way. There are offering boxes in the back of the church to learn about giving options. Please go to our website at mcbc.org slash giving. Let us pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you all the glory and honor today as we, we fellowship and worship with you in your, in your place. We are reminded in John 15, 5 that we can do nothing without you and that you have given us so many blessings. And we thank you for each of these blessings. And we um, just we just want to pray for the offering that will be used to your service and give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to dismiss the, uh, the kids from JK to grade 5 to Promised Land. And also, today, only um, junior high students from grade six to eight are invited to proceed also to their junior high program. By faith we see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design in the lives of those who prove his faithfulness who walk by faith and not by sight by faith our fathers roamed the earth with the power of his promise Of a holy city moved of God's own hand, a place where peace and justice reign. Where will
be seated. Thank you very much, worship team, for a wonderful introduction. Buenos dias, todo mundo. Hermanos y hermanas. What did I say? Good morning, everyone, brothers and sisters. My name is Trevor, one of the elders here at MCBC. I'd love to share a little bit about our SENT mission trip, uh, which Marion had mentioned earlier. And we're doing this in partnership with Canadian Baptist Ministries, or CBM. So CBM has been around for 150 years, since the 1870s, a little bit longer than us, since we've been here since the 1970s. Um, but uh, CBM has been uh, around and witnessing the transforming power of the gospel through churches around the world in mission, and we're grateful to be partnered with them. As many of you know, uh, MCBC submission, uh, supports missions locally, nationally, and globally. And with CBM, uh, we've been able to support and participate in previous trips, uh, one of them being the, in the Philippines. This year, MCBC is sending out a team of eight uh, from our church to El Salvador. Our trip is currently planned to take place in October of 2024. So I'd like to take the time to introduce the eight members of the team who will be going on our mission. So I'm going to call up the team. Vamos aquí equipo, por favor. Here they come. Okay, so these are these are not the. Uh, the hateful eight. <laughs> These are the humble eight, and they're they're here to serve us, um, and here to uh, to serve in this mission. So, I will start from the end. So we have Marion, we have Leonor, we have Nathan, we have Jen, we have Maritza, and we have Nicole, missing from the group, and myself, of course, I'll be going as well. Uh, we're missing Desiree from the group. She wasn't able to make it be here today, but. This is the team. As you can see, we're holding up the uh, national flag of El Salvador, and we are also dressed appropriately to match the flag as much as we could. Um, but this is, this is it here. So um, we, beyond the, the eight here, uh, seven plus, that are here. Uh, we are also supported by our, our lovely pastor, Sheldon, who's, <laughs> who's shepherding us through this journey. Um, we also have a lot of support um, from many of the, um, the members here who are from El Salvador or from uh, Central America, so we're grateful for that. Um, as Marion had mentioned, we are planning a fundraising event on Saturday, June 8th, and we would appreciate your prayers and support as we can continue to plan for the trip. So on that date, we'll be planning a dinner with entertainment, uh, and we will have a silent auction. So we will be requesting some support and donations for this event. Uh, more information will come out in the coming weeks. Uh, through this, this mission, uh, we value the prayers for all the preparation and for each member of the team. Ultimately, this is our ministry as a church that we can share together. Um, we are very keen to take a further step in our faith journey through this mission, and uh, we appreciate everyone here uh, for their support. So uh, through this uh, service today, we will share a quick video on the mission project from our CBM uh, partner uh, in country. Uh, we're going to hear some, some testimonials from our team members here, and we'll hear a little bit more about SENT and CBM um, in our service today. So we thank you for your time, and you will certainly be hearing more from us in the coming weeks. Thank you very much.
Hi friends from Misasawa Church. It's a blessing for us today to say hi and uh, we are so blessed because you will be here in El Salvador in the next month. So today we are here with two pastors. We just finished uh, planning and working on details for your visit. So we are so happy because you will be here for a few days. Uh, this is a beautiful country, beautiful people, beautiful pastor like Pastor Brian, Pastor Oscar. So I just want to introduce them so they want to say something today for you. Estamos muy emocionados por su llegada. We are so happy because you will be here. Y nos sentimos muy gozosos porque vamos a trabajar juntos en la misión. So we are happy because we are going to work together in the mission of God. Así que desde ya les damos la bienvenida. So please we want to say welcome uh, to El Salvador. I would want to introduce this pastor Oscar too. Mi nombre es Oscar Martinez y es un gusto para mí poderles saludar. My name is Oscar Martinez and it's a pleasure for me to say hi today. Esperamos que este tiempo que ustedes van a estar con nosotros sea un tiempo enriquecedor en el cual podamos aprender los unos de los otros. And we are, we are praying that this time that here in El Salvador it will be a great time to learn from each other. Desde ya les decimos bienvenidos. So we say welcome. So I just want to add something from El Salvador. El Salvador is a small country, but uh, beautiful people. And um, as a CBM, we are partner and we are working together with this uh, association. Is uh, Aves is uh, is uh, Baptist Association. So we are working in different projects and sharing the gospel in different ways. We believe as in CBM that we need to share the gospel in words and deeds. So we are happy to have you here in October. So we, we, we want to say welcome, welcome to, to El Salvador. Salvador. Well, good morning. In case you forgot, from the presentations, my name is Leonor, and I am a working mom of two adult children and a fur mom to a very crazy but sweet cockapoo. <laughs> um, it's always such a joy to come here and share a little bit about, about my journey um, throughout my life. Um, I'm not new to MCBC, and um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. MCBC became my uh, home church about 12, 13 years ago when I just returned from living in Europe, where I was for about seven years. And um, just a few months or maybe, yeah, almost a year before the pandemic, um, my family and I decided to move to another church that was just a little bit closer to our house. And um, that at that church, I did a lot of... Um, I served a lot, I volunteered with children's ministry, I did a lot of outreach. I didn't just learn a lot there, I grew spiritually. And it was honestly a wonderful experience. But one day, um, fast forward uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, my family and I sat down uh, after church at home and boldly really my son brought up the conversation about hey, like. Is, does, does God want us to be there, or is God telling us that, you know, we're done, and maybe this is not the place we're supposed to be? And we quickly agreed that we needed to come home to MCBC. So, so here we are. And uh, we did just that. So in case you haven't noticed, God is so funny, so sneaky in a good way. And everything he orchestrates, he orchestrates perfectly. Um, and that he's done in my life. And he's even done that here. Um, we were here for the nine o'clock service and I was just blown away as you might be that really none of us told each other what we were gonna say, um, scriptures we were gonna read, but God knew. <laughs> and he gave each one of us something so similar to, to think about, to pray upon, and, and to bless you with. Um, so it's, he's, he's that amazing, and he has been in my life. 
So those who know me know that I have a serving heart. And uh, you can usually find me volunteering, um, being part of outreach events, hosting outreach events, um, or even hoarding clothing at home um, to give to people in need. So I do have four big bags at home already hoarded for our fill the truck event. Um, and I am happy to get rid of them for that purpose. Um, and with the 45 second jitters I got at the first service, which are now gone, because 45 seconds I think is now gone, um, I forgot to share something and it probably wasn't that important. Actually, it's, it was very important that I wanted to share with you. Missions and serving is very, very important to me, and it always has been. But I never understood why my heart was so called to missions until a few years ago, maybe about, I'm going to say maybe nine, eight, nine years ago, when uh, my mother shared a story that I didn't even know. I mean, I'm like, well, I tell you my age, but I'm old enough that she could have told me this like, 30 years ago, it would have put so much into context, but better late than never. She shared a story that when I um, was uh, just a, a toddler, I'm actually originally from Angola in West Africa, and um, I was really sick, and I had really severe tonsillitis. And at 19 months, I was taken to a hospital in the city we were in, in the capital city, and the doctor said, you know, she's very little, we can't operate, so I would just recommend you take your little girl home to die at home. Yeah, and, um, and then it was my grandma who came over and said, you know, like, you guys don't want to listen to me as, you know, kids don't want to listen to their mothers a lot, but anyway. Um, she said, you know, I, I know you guys don't want to listen, but there is a mission about 120 kilometers from here, and I don't know what they speak, I don't know where they've come from, but they do surgeries there and they pray and they make things happen. So long story short, um, my parents drove me out there and it was by the grace of God that, uh, I'll try to say this without getting emotion, <laughs> that a doctor at the mission right here from Canada, saved my life and performed the surgery. So I didn't know they were Canadian, and I was, so I found this out like eight years ago, right? They could have told me this earlier. I would have been better prepared to share it with you maybe. Um, but yeah, so missions and, and serving um, is that close to my heart, and maybe that's what God has put in my heart in saying, you know, somebody came and saved you, and I don't think, team, I don't want to go and save anybody's life, like, physically, um, because I don't think any of us really have that skill or ability. We have lots of other ones. Um, but it, it truly is important to go out and, and sometimes just save somebody from uh, a really gloomy day, and that we want to do. So this will actually be my third international mission, um, and God knows, and only he knows, why my heart is in Central America. And uh, I'm really, really excited to go. Back in 2013, just to give you a background of my uh, missions experience, I went to uh, Tijuana, Mexico, with a group right here from this church. And um, I remember when the opportunity was announced, my heart actually, like, skipped a beat. And I was very new to the church. I didn't really know anybody, and I thought, wow, like, how... Like, why would they even consider me? Um, I quickly learned after a few mission trips that it really wasn't the church that chose me. It was God who said, you know, I'm picking you, so you got to obey, obey, and I obeyed. But I remember that Sunday, Pastor Richard was preaching, and he said, you know, I would encourage you to sit next to somebody you don't usually sit with or in a different spot that you don't usually sit with every Sunday. Because of course, we are creatures of habit. We walk in, we go straight to that seat, hope nobody's in there, and we sit down. So I obeyed Pastor Richard, and on the next Sunday, I came and I unknowingly sat in a spot right next to Patricia, 
who was the lady that was organizing the missions trip to Mexico. So I got like first-hand info right there and then. I didn't even know it. Um, so again, God is pretty, pretty perfect in, in how and what he orchestrates. Um, after that, I was blessed to be able to go to San Juan, Costa Rica in 2018 with a, um, another mission with a ministry that is also very close to my heart, uh, Operation Christmas Child, which are those boxes with the little wings that this church has so graciously packed for many, many years now. And I was blessed to be able to go and actually hand those boxes out to children in Costa Rica. And we made 438 children and their families very happy and, and um, introduced them to have a relationship with Jesus. So now here we are in 2024. And God was very clear to me about joining this mission. In fact, I knew and I felt something even before we decided to come back to MCBC that there was something that I needed to come and be a part of. And I'm thinking it's this for now and praying that it'll be for many other things um, in the future. So I, I know we can do a lot of things on our own, in our communities, out there, um, next door to, in, for our neighbor. But how much more can we really do together? Um, so God has blessed us with different skills. Um, some people are preachers, givers, singers. Some people are bolder, quieter, more confident. Um, some people can save lives. I don't know that we have that in the group, as I said earlier, but I do know that our team has a lot, a lot to offer, and we each bring a lot of different wonderful things um, to make, again, wonderful things happen. But our main goal is really God and, um, and advancing his kingdom. And we can contribute to it. All of you can contribute. And I'm so looking forward to seeing what God can do through you and through us and through this team in El Salvador. So I have one ask of you. Um, please pray for us. Pray that uh, we will be physically, mentally, and spiritually healthy from now until the time we get there, while we're there, and then long time after we've returned, which is truly the time when we start seeing um, what what. We, just, we were just a part of. Um, so really, that's, that's the prayer I ask for you. And I ask also that you pray that each and every one of us remembers um, that serving is a privilege. And we have been selected, and we have been privileged to go out there and share the good news. Um, so I also pray that you um, that we will adjust our expectations and focus really on what he is intending for us to be, to say, to think, and to do out there. And I'd love to finish with um, a verse, the Great Commission, which is also very close to my heart, in Matthew 28, 16, that says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Thank you for your support, church. Morning, everyone. There's a lot more people here than the 9 o'clock. This is very nice to see, as I usually only go to the 9 o'clock. A lot of people I haven't seen in a long time. All right, so I am Nathan. I am the youngest of the group, and being the youngest, I've been asked to, I've been asked by people, a couple people actually, just friends and family, why I feel prepared to go, if I feel prepared to go, because I'm young. 
So I'll sh guess I'll just share reasons why I'm prepared to go. Uh, all right, so I have served all over the place, whether it's here playing bass. haven't done it for a while, but I used to. Uh, I emceed for Acorns for a long time. I, I have served with kids at other churches, at camps. I've done retreats. A lot of kid stuff. A lot of kid stuff. And while I'm good at that, I'm better at working with my hands and experiencing God. So I went to college when I graduated, same year. I was only 17 when I moved out. And I was like seven hours away from my family. Got very lonely. And I spiraled a bit and pulled away from God. And that's when I learned that I felt closest to God. I felt happiest, most at peace with myself when I was serving in some way or another, or just being useful, you know? Everyone wants to feel useful and needed. And when I eventually hit my lowest, I came back down here and came back to family and friends, which was, again, really nice. And I served at the CBOQ retreats and reconnected with old friends, and they started helping me, like, find myself again. And then out of nowhere, CBOQ asked me if I would like to represent them over in Moncton, New Brunswick, for a conference they do there where I would get to volunteer and like essentially delegate for CBOQ in a sense. And while I was over there, God opened my eyes to see how he was working. And I realized it's a joy to see God working in different ways all over the place, whether it's locally at church down the street or all the way in New Brunswick or as I'm about to experience later this year in El Salvador. Seeing how God works in different ways is truly a privilege and amazing. It's incredible. He might be helping one church with healing from past wounds that the people have, or he might be helping another church just come together in a conflict. And being able to experience that is incredible. And then I go out and I do, I'm not a leader. I volunteer, I guess you could say, at a couple of youth groups at other churches. And I then get to share that experience and reveal to the youth there what I have seen. And it's gotten a couple of them motivated. The youth group earlier this year went to the Dominican Republic and it was great to see some of those youth go. And I'm looking forward to sharing experiences. This is my first missions trip. I've only really done local and then the farthest I've done was the New Brunswick thing, which was incredible. And I'm very excited. A little nervous. Yes. Just, just, just a smidge. But it's mostly excitement for just this adventure and journey that I get to share with lovely people. They really are. And it's going to be a great time. But I also have a prayer request to ask of all of you. Pray that we will remember that while, yes, this is a break in our day-to-day -day lives, and yes, we are flying to another country, help us remember exactly why it is we're doing what we're doing. Help us remember that while it is a break and it's nice to get some time away, at the same time, we're not going to take a break. We are going to serve, we are going to learn, we are going to connect and partner with this other church that we are going to be connecting with. So please pray for us, support us, come to our fundraisers. We could really use it and it would be incredible. And just please connect with us. Don't let us feel like some group that happens to be going that no one ever connects with because we want to connect with you guys and share experiences and feelings and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, thank you. Hello, church family. And a warm uh, welcome to all those who are listening and watching online. My name is Tim, and I'm uh, very 
pleased and privileged to be able to lead you all in a time of prayer as we celebrate Missions Sunday. Uh, you've already heard some of this uh, uh, Bible scripture that I'm going to read. Before he ascended to heaven, Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Life can feel like a complicated puzzle sometimes, with lots of uncertainties and challenges. But here's the good news. Jesus tells us in today's passage that he's always with us, no matter what. His presence is like a reliable compass guiding us in the right direction as we navigate the twists and turns of life. Jesus is our greatest and most reliable companion. If you've ever had a trustworthy friend who was faithful to walk with you in tough times, you know how invaluable such companionship can be. And Jesus is the greatest and most loving friend we could ever have, guiding, comforting, and giving us strength. In his presence, we can find peace, courage, and the assurance that we're never alone. Let us this morning take the words of Matthew 28, 20 to heart. As we go through life, remember that Jesus is always with us. Whether things are going well or not, in the everyday and the extraordinary moments, his presence is our constant. He's with us always, even to the end of the age. Let us go now in prayer and thank him for his presence. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us today and all days. Today we pray, Lord, that we will feel your presence as you, through the work of the Holy Spirit, guide us and inspire us to live in a manner that is worthy of your name. Today we pray, Lord, that as you walk with us, sit beside us, follow us, and lead us, that you will fill our hearts with pure joy, a joy that only can be found in a relationship with you. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to imbue our hearts with the true spirit of Christianity, which is to do unto others that which we would want to have done unto us. It is a very difficult demand to follow, Lord, to love one's neighbor as ourselves, and we ask for your forgiveness for the numerous times we have failed in this endeavor. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we have allowed the pronouns I and me to permeate our conversation to the detriment of our neighbor. Forgive us those times when we have allowed our selfish pride to take precedence over the feelings and well-being of others. Forgive us, Lord, for our selfishness, our sins, and our transgressions and our mistakes of the past. We are blessed, Lord, because we know that you are a loving, kind, gracious, and compassionate God who willingly forgives his children if they repent. We thank you, Lord, for those times when we have fallen and fallen badly, and it was your grace and love, and only your grace and love, that picked us up. Teach us, Lord, that all good things come from you. Help us all, Lord, to surrender each and every day to your will and to your control. Teach us, Lord, that to achieve real peace and joy in our lives, and we know, Lord, that this is not always easy to do, that we must learn to surrender all our concerns, all our worries, all our problems to you. We pray, Lord, that you will take our concerns, anxieties, and worries from our shoulders and put them on yours. Help us, Lord, teach us that we should cast all our anxiety on you because you care for us. 
And help us never forget, Lord, that in all things, whether in personal triumphs or personal tragedies, that you work for the good of those who love you and who have been called according to your purpose. Lord, we are so grateful and thankful that you are in control of our lives and that you love us and care for us as much as you do. Help us to grow in our faith and be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances. Lord, we pray today for the various members of our church who, for one reason or another, are facing difficult, trying, challenging, and sad times. Some have lost loved ones, and they have a broken heart. Many people here today have health concerns and are facing a future that is fraught with distress and uncertainty. Many have relational problems. They may be struggling to make their marriage a going concern, and some are so worried about their children and the trajectory of their lives that they can't sleep at night. Lord, may they be strengthened by the Apostle Paul's words, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell him what you need and thank him for all he has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. But most of all, we pray, Lord, that all those who have concerns and worries today know that they are part of a loving, caring, praying church that is always ready to provide comfort and strength to those who need it. Lord, we pray today that you will continue to bless our beautiful, growing church. We are so grateful, Lord, that you regularly continue to provide new members to our church, and we pray, Lord, that these new members will grow in their love for you and that you will mold them and shape them so they will reflect your love, your grace, and your peace to a skeptical and unbelieving world. Help all of us, Lord, whether we are new to MCBC or have been attending here for years, understand that in many cases, we are the only Bible that some will ever read. Lord, on this Mission Sunday, we pray for the sent team from our church that will be traveling to El Salvador in October. We pray, Lord, for safe travels and that it will be a blessed and meaningful experience for all involved. We thank you, Lord, for their dedication and their commitment and their love for the people of El Salvador and their passion and willingness to spread the gospel through deed and action in a foreign land. Lord, we pray today for all the peoples in the world who are facing discord, strife, hunger, homelessness, homelessness sadness, and grief. We, great, we pray, Lord, for the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, the disastrous situation in Gaza, the ongoing strife in Haiti, the civil war in Sudan, and the drought problem in countries in Southern Africa. This is just to name a few of the issues that are confronting our world. Please give the political leaders wisdom and guidance as they continue to address these problems. Lord, we thank you today for all that you have done for us, and we pray, Lord, for your continued blessings in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the multitude of blessings you pour out to your children on a regular and daily basis. We pray, Lord, for your continued guidance and wisdom in our lives. Help us be, Lord, all that we can be. Help us be all that you want us to be. Create in us a desire to know you more and to serve you faithfully day by day. Provide for us, through the reading of Scripture, the assurance that you will continue to be a refuge for us during unsettling times, and, me, and may we feel, under the shelter of your wings, steadfast love, and may we continue to build our lives on the command of Jesus to love one another. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Good morning. 
All right, I'll be reading from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Question that we all have is what are we going to be eating at the El Salvador dinner? Will there be pupusas? This is the question. Yeah. Oh, I heard yeses. And if there are, I think many people will regret that they did not join the team um, and go have the chance to go to El Salvador, which is actually one of the, my favorite places I have ever visited. So um, I think you will have a wonderful experience. Well, I'm speaking to you today from two different capacities. My first one is as your sister in Christ um, from this church family. Just, we just want to celebrate. Don't we want to celebrate this SENT team um, as our representatives to uh, extend our collective solidarity with the church in El Salvador? Um, for those of you who are making this commitment, I hope you hear that you're not alone. Um, I think we're all saying that. You are not going alone. We know that you are sacrificing time and energy and your finances, and we're grateful to be able to be going with you, to support you through our words of encouragement, through our prayers as you prepare for this trip, and most importantly, when you come back, how God will have transformed your hearts and what he will call you to uh, learn um, and do differently, maybe, and how you will engage in uh, the community around you. But my other capacity is today as the executive director of CBM. And for those of you who don't know what CBM is, it's okay. You can admit that. And you often hear these acronyms. You're like, what is, what is CBM? So Canadian Baptist Ministries, we are your mission partner. We represent you in your mission concerns. And we've been doing that for 150 years. So not, you are part of a family of 930 Canadian Baptist churches across the country. And together, we extend the love of Christ through our words and our deeds. We do that together. And we're stronger together. So I am here in that capacity today as well. And I want to just affirm this church. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful. Our family is so grateful to be part of MCBC. And that mission is part of your core identity. It is not something that is periphery, this outside activity. It is core to who this congregation is. And we noticed that from the start, from when we first started attending here. Out of this faith community, we hold a shared passion and a desire to see all people come to know and hear about and experience the love of Jesus in really real and tangible ways. And I think we share that together. So it's very fitting that we're sending a SENT team this year on our 150th anniversary as Canadian Baptists engaging in global mission. Woohoo! 150 years of doing this together. It's a very special year for us. We've actually created a video. So uh, we have a lot of videos today, but uh, you see another one from us. And this will share a little bit about our history and a little bit about our present as well as Canadian Baptists serving in mission together. And you'll also see a, and hear a very familiar face um, in this video. So let's watch together. Stepped out in the river, mercy was flowing. Their hearts were burning with your holy fire, bringing your blessing, serving, reflecting hope for the lost. And
and you'll find all kinds of information and stories there. But today, even as we prepare to send this team out, uh, we realize that we stand on the shoulders of thousands of faithful men and women uh, who have served with CBM in its history. Starting in 1874, when the first Canadian Baptist missionaries, John and Mary McLaurin from Ontario, uh, left to serve in Kakanada, India. And to be a missionary in those days was no small feat. It was 
uh, you went for your lifetime. Uh, many of those people went and never came back. They are buried in those countries where they served. Or they only came back one time, and that was to retire, probably 45 or 50 years later. And most of them missed the funerals and of their um, siblings and of their parents uh, back in Canada. And for them, they committed their lives uh, to service. But, of course, a lot has changed since that time, right? Now, a lot of CBM's work on the field is carried out, as you can see from some of the pictures, is carried out and led by nationals, people who are experts in their own language, in their context, and they help to inform us as Canadians how we can best come alongside them in the work that God is doing in their own uh, parts of the world. In the last 40 years or so, CBM has sent out thousands of people to go on these short-term sent trips to see the work of our partners on the ground firsthand. And so the question that always gets asked is, but isn't it better just to send money? Isn't it better? Like, why are we, isn't it a waste of money to send people to go and to, to go on these short-term trips? And what I always say, how I answer that question is that money does not replace relationship. Money does not replace relationship. These scent trips are so valuable for us to be able to help situate our own faith journeys within God's greater story that is unfolding everywhere all the time. Even down the road, as Nathan said, even in other churches down the street from us, God's story is unfolding in those places. The Spirit is moving in those places in a different way than it's moving here at our church. There is an incredible richness in having the opportunity to see the world through different eyes and to witness firsthand the movement of the Holy Spirit. And that is something that can only happen through an embodied immersion experience of building relationships with brothers and sisters who are living in another context and culture. And it's something, you can't learn that when you are immersed only in your own culture. You have to be able to go to experience. Through these experiences, I think we can more fully understand the grand story that God is weaving. And it's one that has stretched from the beginning of time and will continue on long after this trip is over and even after all of us are no longer here. Our world has really changed quickly, hasn't it? The world is rapidly changing and sometimes it can feel very chaotic, it can feel disorienting. And the issues of our generation can seem huge and overwhelming, but let us never doubt that God is in control. God is still in control, and his mission has never changed. His plan to restore all things and all people to himself, that plan has never changed from the beginning of time until now. He continues to bring about his wholeness, his transformation to lives and communities every day, everywhere. So for us, all of us, not just the team, for all of us to be God's missionary people means that we have to recognize his agency in our world because God is the primary agent working in the world, not us, right? Despite our best efforts, we are reminded every day we do not control the world. We barely control our own lives most of the time, right? The success and failure of God's plans do not rely on us he just invites us to play a very small part. And that's what our SENT team is doing. You get to play a part in this master plan that bridges geography and culture and language, and you get to be part of an ongoing legacy of people sent to faithfully follow Jesus into the world. And that's what he's calling each one of us to be, sent into the world every day where we are, wherever he has placed us. So let's go boldly and courageously forward as his missionary people, serving him through our words and our actions wherever we are. I'm going to pass the time now to Pastor Sheldon. Don't you feel enriched and alive by everything that we have experienced today? It is wonderful to be with you, and we are thrilled to introduce our scent team that is going. So thank you to all of you. Here we are. Here we are meeting two weeks after Easter, 
still celebrating that the risen Lord is among us and sending us out. And if you have your Bibles, we're just going to take a few moments, but we just want to anchor everything that we've done. Just as we think about a few verses of Scripture from John chapter 20, we heard John 20, 19 to 23. Think of that passage of Scripture. The disciples had plenty of reasons to be afraid. Only a few days before that first Easter, they have just seen their leader crucified by the Roman authorities. And for this reason, their doors are bolted shut. They are hiding from the authorities. What horrible thing is going to happen next to them? And now Mary has shown up saying, Jesus is alive. And after all of their heartache, I trust that you can feel in that text the, the skepticism of the disciples, not really even believing that Jesus is risen. But for Jesus, Jesus, the grave clothes could not keep him bound. For Jesus, a boulder in front of the tomb could not keep him contained. For Jesus, death could not hold him down. And now locked doors were no obstacle. You cannot keep Jesus out. How often do I find myself behind closed doors, filled with fear, and living on the wrong side of the resurrection. Verse 19 puts it quite simply with that one little phrase in that verse, and Jesus came and stood among them. Today, right now, we affirm the living God amidst personal problems and global evil. Our lives are different today because of that first Easter Sunday. I love what Yaroslav Pelikan, a Yale historian, uh, was reported to say. He said this, if the resurrection of Jesus happened, nothing else really matters. If the resurrection of Jesus did not happen, then nothing else really matters. Easter changes everything. And then Jesus appeared to his disciples saying these words, Peace be with you. Jesus doesn't bark out orders or commands. He doesn't tell his disciples off with words like, you should have known better. I told you I was coming back. Jesus' first word to his disciples is not a message of their failure. He gives a gift to the disciples, just what they needed. The words are this. The words are for you. Peace be with you. In fact, Jesus says it three times in that chapter, verse, uh, verse 19, verse 21, and then later on in verse 26, he said these words to the disciples also in the upper room before he went to the cross in John 14, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. If this passage teaches us one thing, it's this. When it seems the world is crumbling around you, the presence of the Lord is remarkably near. There's a classic book by St. John of the Cross written over 500 years ago called The Dark Night of the Soul. And in it, he writes, there are three phases of the Christian journey. Beginners, progressives, and perfect. He argues that to really grow out of the beginner stage is not to memorize a certain number of Bible verses or, or to attend another class. He writes this, that what is required to receive God's gift of the dark night? That's what you need to receive. We need to receive the gift of the dark night. And he says the dark night is some kind of crisis that turns your life upside down and you do not know where God is and where things get so dark where you just feel like saying, I am going to die. Your dark night is actually what St. John of the Cross describes as the ordinary pathway of growth. Really? 
I don't think I want that pathway of growth. This seems almost unbelievable that God loves you enough to strip you of the things that keep you from him. That despair that the disciples felt when everything was taken away from them. And then in verse 20, reread this. He appeared to them and he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And then in the very next verse, we read that Jesus sends them. Our God is a sending God. He sends Moses with these words in Exodus chapter 3. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Don't forget that Moses said a few verses later, uh, pardon your servant, but please send somebody else. Isaiah, he has this great vision of the glory of the Lord filling the temple. Isaiah is undone. And after this great awareness of the Almighty, God asks, who will I send to my people who desperately need my presence? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. By the way, that is a risky prayer that every single person here is called to say. Are you ready to pray that prayer and to say, Lord, here I am, here I am, send me. Jeremiah is called to by God to be a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah says this, Jeremiah 1.7, I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, don't say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. In the Old Testament, we see that God is ascending God. And now in the Gospel of John, we read in John 3.17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. God sending his son is the heart of John's gospel. And now notice in verse 21, the conclusion of John spills over into the sending of the disciples. In fact, the church's mission is to carry on Jesus' mission. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. For God so loved the world that he sent his son. For God so loved the world that he sent his followers. For God so loved the world that he has sent you into the world. And then with that, he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Why does Jesus breathe on his disciples? Think with me, what is the very first time in the Bible where we see God breathing in a special way, putting out God's breath? Do you remember that passage? Do you remember that verse? It's Genesis 2, Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. God's breath gives Adam life. Jesus breathes on his disciples, and they become his new creation. Jesus breathes, and the Holy Spirit enables them to do the job they couldn't imagine doing otherwise. The ever-creative God is ready to breathe on you, equip you, give you peace, and then to send you. By the way, being sent, as Jennifer remind us, is not a little side hobby. It's not just something that we hold on to the side. I love how Jennifer just said, this is a marker of our church, that, that, we, that this is a part of our own DNA, that we understand this whole idea of mission, that we are sent. Where is God sending you this week? Where is God sending you this year? There's an old hymn with these words, Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Help me to love as thou dost love. And do as thou wouldst do. I'd like to invite the worship team to come up here just as they get ready to lead us. 
with our closing uh, hymn, just as we song as we think of coming out here. But we want to just remind each other of this. To the sent team, you are not alone. You are sent in his strength. And to all of you who are disciples, you are sent to give yourselves to others for Jesus' sake and to love the world for Jesus' sake in word and in deed. Let's pray together. Lord, we remember these words that you have equipped us, that you have called us, that you've breathed on us, that you've sent us, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with us as we sing our last song. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through your darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows Feel the pride.
Jesus Christ, our living hope, you go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. God has a purpose in your being right where you are. Christ, who indwells you by the power of his spirit, wants to do something in and through you. So believe this and go in his grace, his love, his power, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.